All right, so that's basically it. We are done with PEs. Uh, as you saw, lots of good stuff to memorize, lots of things that are RVAs or absolute virtual addresses, a lot of interaction between export information and import information, three different types of imports, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff at the end, the, the debug information, resources, the relocations, the load configuration, all these sort of things. Um, you know, I pointed out where I thought things were security relevant, things like import address table, how it relates to IAT hooking, EAT hooking. That's a common technique used for hiding stuff. I showed you the simple kind of uh, case where you hide from task manager, the calc.exe and stuff like that. But, um, but so we do have more questions and more game for you to play to reinforce this last information. We have it only for, not resources, but we do have it for, um, load configuration. I guess we don't have it for a certificate table yet. But we are once again going to go on from here because I want to get you at least enough of the ELP stuff that we can come back. So what I want to do is now is we're going to cover the ELP stuff. Um, actually, I think we'll probably take a five minute break quick just so I can reorient myself and know what I have coming up. But we're going to cover ELP. We're going to show how it's similar and dissimilar to PE. And then once we get to, let's say, 4 o'clock or so, uh, we'll come back and, well, we'll maybe first show a little bit about packed files on ELF. So we'll say, here's a normal file on ELF, and here's a file where someone is packing and compressing it down. How does that manipulate the equivalence of the uh, section headers and stuff like that? How are those manipulated in order to compress it down but still decompress it in memory? And then uh, we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll come back. We'll show a quick thing in Windows, hopefully, of packed files, and then we'll come back and we'll walk through the virus example. And the virus example is just very simple proof of concept code that I made where it is using inline assembly, so it's not going to be entirely clear for people who haven't had assembly class, but what I'm going to be pointing out is where it's using assembly and where it's using C code in order to parse the data structures. I'm going to be showing it's, there's one particular technique that you see the virus uses it, exploit codes uses it, rootkits use it, and so there's a particular way of walking some metadata in order to find exports in the uh, kernel 32 for that load library and get proc address so that you don't have to like import them. So a virus is not going to have an import address table that says, like, dear OS, please fill in load library and get proc address for me. An exploit, just a little bit of shell code running in memory, is not going to have that. And so this one technique, you'll see it come up over and over. I think it's in the reverse engineering class. It's in Corey's exploits class. It's in this class. It's one particular technique. Uh, is very key to a lot of different malware, but we wouldn't be able to cover it without you having knowledge of the DOS header and the NT header and the data directory and the import address table and the export address table and things like that. So we'll come back to that right at the end to make sure we at least cover from 4 to 4.30, cover that. And then beyond that, you know, after 4.30, I'm not running off today. I, I, I didn't book my, my flight, so I'll be here as late as you want. You can ask questions. We can do game whatever people want to do after 4.30, but I'll try to wrap it up by 4.30. So five-minute break. We're going to switch over to ELF now.